Kelly here from CodeBots. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create a custom API with both GraphQL and REST. If you want to jump forward at any point, please have a look at the description. To start off with, I'm going to be working with a pre-built model that we have here, um, built around a learning management system. Um, I won't be going into detail of what's involved in this model itself, but suffice to say that we have lessons and users that can complete those lessons. What I'm gonna start off with is my REST full API. What I'm gonna to try to achieve with this is creating an API that allows me to return a list of lessons that the current logged in user has already completed or at least started. To begin with, I'm gonna jump over to my lesson controller. Um, the lesson controller can be found within the file structure underneath source, main, Java, controllers, lesson. Inside of this, um, we're gonna jump down to the protected region at the very bottom of the file called add any additional endpoints here and turn this on. To begin with, we're gonna start with a very basic endpoint. This endpoint is not gonna return anything but an empty list. What we've done here now is added a get mapping for our endpoint that points us to our get started lessons and produces a JSON result. This will be returning an empty list in our response object. Starting this ap application up now. While this is building, I'll introduce you to a tool that I'll be using to showcase this. Flicking across, I'm using a tool called, called Insomnia. So Insomnia is a REST client that allows us to um, mock queries towards a REST endpoint. As you can see on the left here, I've got a login and a get started lessons already prepared. The login will make sure that I'm log logging in and I have my cookie that allows me to authenticate against my endpoint and the get started lessons will make sure that I'm querying the correct endpoint. We can see our application is actually started, is starting now. We'll wait a little bit longer for it to kick off. Now to check that our application is actually started, let's jump across and jump into our browser and have a look at localhost 8080. Beautiful. Jumping back across to our um, REST client, let's log in. This will be using our demo credentials, super at example, um, with our password password. And now let's hit that endpoint. It's empty. As you can see here, our empty list is being returned with a 200 OK status code. Now let's jump onto the next stage. What we wanna do is expand this so it's actually returning some of our records. What I'm gonna be using here is our lesson service. The lesson service find all with page with a page index of one and a page size of 10 will fetch the first 10 or so records in our database with no filtering applied. We'll then be returning this list again. Restarting our application, let's have a look see if this worked. Now that our application has started again, let's log in, same as before, and resubmit our query. And here you can see we're re retrieving two different results um, from our system. This is data that was pre-populated within the application. Given the fact that we're now searching for lessons based upon no filters at all, let's expand this a little bit further. What I've done here now is I've expanded this to include a couple of different query parameters. The first query parameter is gonna be our page and second query parameter being our page size. What this enables us to do is now search for our lessons using pagination. Um, by default, we wanna be querying the very first page in the top 10 results or the first 10 results, but we can adjust this as needed from our REST client. Jumping across back to our REST client, we can see that here with our page and our page size being marked as query parameters. Um, without digging into this any further, I'm gonna jump back over and actually let's start filtering. So now that we've built it, filter's the most important part. What we wanna be doing is filtering based upon any lesson that has had a submission against it for a particular user, with that particular user being the current logged in user. To do that, we need to jump into our lesson service. Inside of our lesson service, we're gonna be adding a custom condition that will allow us to filter based upon those parameters. Inside the process condition method, we wanna be adding a new custom case.
Turning on this protected region, we'll be adding our custom case in here. And our case is going to be is started. Making sure all our imports are correctly resolved. This will allow us to actually now filter based upon our related entities, based upon the user that's being logged in. So what we've actually done here now is we're using something called Query DSL. Query DSL is a tool built on top of Java Spring JPA um, that allows us to build queries programmatically without having to write SQL. What we've got here is our lesson form versions as well as our lesson submission entities. What this means is each time we submit a lesson, it will be submitted against a form version. This is using the forms extension as part of CodeBots. Each submission entity being related against a version and that related version being related back to the lesson itself will give us the relationship we need. What we've done in here is built up a predicate um, using two separate inner joins. This may look very similar to SQL, but that's because it is. Jumping across to a little um, SQL statement that I've written earlier, you can see this is imitating a two inner joins on three different tables. So querying our lesson entities based upon the relationship between our form version entities and our lesson form submission entities. In this, now that we've got this is started query, what we wanna be doing is expanding this one step further. So is started is excellent. However, it doesn't actually do anything by itself. We need to be using this query within our lesson controller itself. Jumping back to the lesson controller, let's replace our lessons find all with page with a more complex method. Making sure all of our imports are properly resolved as well. What we've done here is a couple of different things. First of all, we're pulling our current logged in user out of our security context. Um, this is pulled in from the request in the authenticating user itself. What are we then doing is creating a new query um, based upon this is started case that we created earlier. This is started then passes along the value of the current logged in user. Going down into our actual lesson service itself, we are using a already created, already existing method called find sorted page with query and then passing in these parameters. We then sort by the modified date descending. Um, the created modifieds are attributes that are automatically added by CodeBots. If I restart this one now, we should see the difference. While that's building, I might actually just tweak this a little bit. Making sure our get started lessons mapping is at the top here again, we'll hit the build button one more time. Now that our application is started, I'm gonna jump back into the browser and make sure that our information in the data in the database is what we expect. Logging in as my super user, the same one I'm using within my API. I'm gonna jump into the administration panel and then have a look at my actual lessons themselves. So as you can see here, we've got a list of lessons that were pre-populated earlier. But what we're actually filtering for is not lessons by themselves. We're also filtering on lessons based upon the user's submissions against a particular lesson. Having a look at our um, lesson submissions from the administration panel here, we'll see what we have. So as you can see, there is two records here. First record is for um, first record submission and the second one are both against the same lesson. So what we're expecting to see from our new query is a single result. Jumping back over to our Insomnia, let's log in. Now let's resubmit our query. Beautiful. As you can see, we've got a single result now. And this single result is going to be the lesson that has that submission or one of those submissions against it. Now, what about security? So what we've done so far is relied upon the base security built into um, Springbot itself. What that does stop us from worrying about is any anonymous users logging in and accessing this endpoint. What it doesn't stop at the moment is anybody of any other role type from accessing this particular endpoint itself. While looking back into our code again, um, while our service itself is secured, we have not secured the endpoint itself. So to be able to actually secure the endpoint, what we're going to do is we're gonna copy the same security across from our service into our endpoint. To do that, 
we jump into a find sorted page with query, copy this pre-authorized statement from the top here and bring it back across to our controller method. What this does is prevents anybody who doesn't have uh, permission to read the lesson entity from actually use, utilizing this method at all. We can quite easily test this by security by just jumping back into Insomnia and not logging in first. So ensuring that our query here doesn't have any of the cookies associated with it. If we try to send this query, you can see we're still logged in. Invalidating those cookies. We can see we get a 401 unauthorized. So our endpoint is secure by default with our additional security based upon our security diagram. Now that we've built out an API using REST, let's have a look at GraphQL. GraphQL is a slightly different API, but the beautiful thing about the way this has been built is that we can leverage all the changes we just made to our service. First steps first, we're gonna to wanna to jump into our schema. In our lesson schema, what we wanna do now is add a new method to actually allow us query that, that lesson service. What we're gonna do is jump into this protected region here under our queries. We're gonna turn it on. and add a new method. This method is gonna be more or less a copy of our lessons method with the, with the exception of we've now removed our order by and our where conditional statements. Now that we've added the schema itself, what we need to do is one more step. We need to actually notify our resolver that this schema method exists. To do that, we're gonna jump into the lesson resolver, query resolver. Moving right down to the bottom of the file, we're gonna add a new method in here um, under the import any additional class methods here, protected region. Turning this on. Make sure all our imports are valid. And we are gonna be good to go. So a couple of things to note with this method um, is this is more or less identical to what we did in our lesson controller. A couple of key differences. First key difference is the result that it returns itself is not a response object. It is just a list of lessons itself. The GraphQL um, serializer will deal with wrapping that in our correct GraphQL response. Additionally, we've already pre-appended the pre-authorize. So our permissions that we apply to our controller, we're also applying to our GraphQL resolver method. Saving this now, we're gonna build again. While this is building, um, I will point out as well, the simplicity of linking this resolver to our schema. Looking across at our lesson schema here, our method in our query is called lessons started. Pulling that across into our lesson query resolver, the method name itself is identical. Additionally, our two parameters that we've marked in our method um, signature here are also apparent within the um, method signature here. Our lessons, so what you can see here is we're returning a list of lessons, is again represented in our query resolver return type. While this is building, I did actually notice we're actually missing something. So, so far within our lesson service itself, we've been filtering within our case, we've been filtering based upon the relationship between submissions and a lesson. What we haven't filtered by is the logged in user. Going back down into our actual query conditions. So our process condition method, we're gonna add that in now. And this is as simple as adding a where statement as you would in SQL. And what we're doing here is we're pulling out the value that we passed down earlier from our condition. Let's re-hit build again to update for this. Just updating this here to make sure that we're actually passing the correct types. So now that our application has started again, I'm gonna jump back over to Insomnia and check to see if my new filters and new conditions have worked properly. Logging in again. You can see we still get the same result. So our new filter is not broken the original code. Now to test our GraphQL. Logging back into our browser, 
I'm gonna jump back into our administration section and open GraphQL. So GraphQL is actually a tool that comes bundled with your development environment with Springbot that allows you to query your GraphQL endpoints without having to write any code. So having a look at this one here, I'm gonna create a new query. This query is going to query my lesson started method that I just created. And I wanna return the ID of the lessons and the name. Look at that, we're getting the same result from our REST endpoint. Beautiful thing with GraphQL is we can actually expand this further um, and pull in more information such as our summary, duration, and any of the other attributes of the lesson. One additional benefit here as well is we can also test not only our GraphQL, but our REST endpoints as well using the built-in development tools. Going back over to our application, I'm gonna view the open API spec here. This will open a Swagger interface. Benefit of the Swagger interface is we can also hit our new endpoints here. Scrolling down, looking at our lesson controller, expanding this out, we now have a new get method in here. API lesson get started lessons. Expanding this out, we can then hit pry it out and execute. And hitting execute here, we'll then get our responses. So now that you've seen me create two new APIs for both GraphQL and REST, well, thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, um, please hit that subscribe button. But if you wanna give it a go yourself, jump over to cobots.com and sign up. Thank you.